there at the beginning. I'm gonna try to do these chronologically, but I make no promises. At the beginning, when the girl asks Jimmy, what's the matter, I really think he should have responded, I just realized we have the exact same hair, and with my feminine face and body shape, no one would even be able to tell us apart if they were just a little bit of a distance away. How the hell did Jason miss at that range with harpoon gun? The electrical stuff on his body, you know, the lame 80s animated, man, those never looked good in the 80s. At the end, Snooty British gets a swirly. Is that supposed to be like poetic justice because, you know, he threw, in the, threw her in the water? It was just another boring death. The one good death that I can offhand think of would be Death by Sauna Rock. That wasn't bad. The rest were just, you know, he throws you, or he stabs you, or he slits your throat, a couple of seconds pass, and then blood finally starts gushing out, even though his blade did not touch your throat. When he stabs the dude steering the boat, doesn't it look like he stabs him in the ass? Seriously. You know, you see it from bit of a distance away, you just see him do the movements, and I don't know, maybe I have a sick, twisted mind. If toxic waste shoots through the sewers below New York daily, then what's on the streets and in the politicians' minds? He drowns yet again, Jason, this time in toxic waste, which has foam on it for some reason and which turns him into the hallucinated kid, again with a full set of hair. What the heck were, was even the thing with the hallucinations? I mean, first of all, there's no way that she would have been attacked, because the ages do not match up whatsoever. He was like 13 in the 50s, okay? If she was a kid back then too, she'd be older than a high school student by now, unless she really had to, you know, do the classes over. How was she that traumatized that she frickin' hallucinates? I just don't see it. Not from an attack that wasn't because it couldn't have been, unless he, like, suddenly had a frickin' growth spurt just before he returns in the second movie or something. The hallucination with the, I think, mirror or something, you know, where I think, like, something comes through and tries to grab at her or something, that was pretty decently done. In general, the effects in this were good. I don't know why there were so few of them. Most of the deaths were really dull, you know, and a lot of them didn't really have any effects to them, other than stunts. Stunts have been around long before this whole makeup craze of 80s slasher films started, and that was kind of the point of the 80s slasher films, to have makeup effects, you know, to have stuff going through the skin and, you know, dying in really creative ways. This was the last movie in the run of them, you know, when they were making pretty much one a year. You know, since the first one. They only really skipped, I think, two two or three years in the run. And I can maybe kind of see why. I think at this point they were just really running out of ideas. I mean, I don't know exactly what, you know, Jason Goes to Hell is like yet, but I don't know. It shows that they were really running out of ideas. I mean... It's a real jump the shark kind of thing when you take a character completely out of his environment for the last 20 minutes of a film, anyway. Last thing on the sewer thing at the end what was up with the montage when he supposedly dies? That was really strange. I do 
kind of like the line, you know, when I think the lead says, there's a maniac trying to kill us, and the retort is, welcome to New York. That was the one funny thing in this to me. The boxing was pitiful. So Jason kicks down a boombox. I guess everyone's a critic. And the dude says, you're dead meat. I think technically at this point he is like several times over. On the boat earlier, did the dog see the hallucination too? It seems to react to it. I love Snooty McBritish's reaction to, you know, no, Jason, Jason is dead. Okay, so he's come back to life twice already, but that doesn't mean he can do it a third time. And the crazy Ralph of this movie, he just makes such a huge effort to tell these people that they're all going to die. You know, he runs through the rain up to the cabin, uh, steering, whatever the thing is called. And, you know, just to tell them, you're all going to die, you're all doomed. So the kid, after losing his glasses, accidentally shoots the wrong guy. I guess there should have been more armed people in that situation so that nothing bad would have possibly happened. The chick with the guitar... Why was she even in this? Is that a muscular bod or what? I take or what for 500, Alex. I'm not saying I'm the most muscular guy around, but neither was the black dude. Why does Jason make such a huge effort not to kill the lead right after he's killed the mugger? You know, he could easily just kill her quickly, as he's done with several other characters. But instead, he waits until he gets shot, and then he, you know, kills that dude. I love the logic of the other mugger, you know, the effeminate one, I think it was. I better slowly walk towards the guy as I empty my gun, even though it's clearly having absolutely no effect on him. Finally, the most obnoxious character dies before the end. That was nice. Even though she again died in such a boring manner, just, you know, he breaks the mirror. For half a second I thought they were seriously going into Predator 2 territory, you know. Why does Jason have a Darth Vader breathing thing going on now? Does anyone else love how when he breaks the glass and that door, you know, and tries to grab her, she, you know, intentionally backs into his hand, you know, to make sure that he can actually reach her because maybe Kane Hara couldn't quite reach her or something. It's so obvious and so awkward looking. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Friday the 13th Part 8. Jason does not take Manhattan. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.